Hi everybody, welcome to Photographer's Coffee Morning. Today we're going to be talking about my favourite camera, the Fujifilm X100V, and why I don't use it anymore. For those of you who don't know, I switched to Fujifilm recently, you can see it on my YouTube channel. We talked about it a lot in the podcast. So I've been using the Fujifilm X100V for about two years now. It was definitely not my first Fujifilm camera. I started out with the X-T3, and I really, really loved using that. It was an incredible little camera, really, really nice lenses, beautiful colors, and generally, it provided a different kind of shooting experience to the Sonys that I was using at the time. Um, I didn't actually get an X100V anywhere near them because, to be honest, a 35mm lens is not my favorite, and... The X100V has a 23mm f2 lens on it, which is the full frame equivalent of a roughly 35mm 2.8 f3, somewhere in there. And I didn't really understand why anybody would want one. So rather than buying this, I bought the X-T3, which at the time was an incredible deal, um, along with a bunch of prime lenses. I used it actually for some of my favourite jobs. Like I'd, I'd taken some pictures of one of the restaurants I like most, the Tokyo Ramen. Uh, that entire job was shot on the Fuji X-T3 uh, with the 35mm 1.4 and the 23mm 1.4. And I really loved the experience using the cameras. But one of the issues I had with it was that the autofocus was not the best. And this was when they first released the X-T3. Later on, they updated the firmware and it got way, way better. So if you have an X-T3, they're incredible cameras and actually... They're one of my sleeper recommendations for being one of the best the best value cameras of all time. Um, so if you have an X-T3, you definitely shouldn't feel bad about it. They make some incredible images uh, just like this. And yeah, I, I, I kind of used the Fuji, took some of my favorite pictures I've ever taken. And actually, it did really well with video as well. Like It was one of the first cameras to have a usable 4K 60p without an insanely huge crop. I think it was like a 1.18 crop on, on the sensor. So I was using it a lot for slow motion video, a lot for stills, really liked it. But then Canon drew my attention with their mirrorless system. One of the issues you find with smaller sensors like this one is that it's much, much harder to get a shallow depth of field. And that had been a hallmark of my style up to that point. Um, so the X-T3 went, moved over to Canon, um, ended up picking up an EOS R and the 50mm 1.2 before they released the R5 and R6 and really, really enjoyed that camera. The Canon lenses with that older sensor look beautiful. It's the right combination of sharp detail but with a little bit of noise to hide some of that, the most kind of brutal sharpness of those lenses. Um, a year later, I ended up picking up the R6 and R5 and the Fuji's um, went away to fund that purchase. From the moment that I sold them, I regretted getting rid of them. They, they, they were very special cameras they had a character to them that i hadn't seen from a lot of other camera companies and genuinely when i was working with them they felt like they were a joy now this is kind of at the beginning of the lockdown period and i, I remember pre-ordering the canon r6 getting it using it for my first few jobs after coming back when we had the brief periods like between lockdowns and really enjoying the Canon R6, but thinking something wasn't quite right with the color. Um, they were perfectly serviceable cameras, but for me, they didn't really live up to those food and colors that I'd had before, and actually not even to the colors that came from the EOS R. Like, I actually prefer the colors from that sensor. Um, I picked up an R5 to try and find if that was any different, and it was slightly improved, but genuinely, I was still not getting what I wanted from those cameras. And all the way through this period, there was kind of like a boom after the, the reopening after COVID. And I went from being completely unable to work and take pictures and taking tons and tons of photographs for work. And no part of me wanted to pick up the R5 or the R6 for personal pictures. Like I'd, I'd get back from a job and I wouldn't want to touch them. They'd stay in the bag and they'd never, never get looked at. So I went to my local camera store and they happened to have this Fujifilm X100V in stock used and I got an incredible deal on it and I was hooked. I took thousands and thousands of family pictures on this camera because it was just so pleasant to use. I got those colors back that I'd loved from the X-T3 but it was portable and fun and at this point I'd started looking into some of the older film point-and-shoot cameras that contact T3 Yashica T4, Olympus Mu 2, 
and a bunch of others, and they all had 35 millimeter f2.8 f3.5 lenses, and basically I'd realized that this was a digital version of those cameras. So the X100V became basically my go everywhere camera. The strap on it here is from from um, Holdfast Strap Company. It was sent to me by Miles Whitboyer. Thank you very much, Miles. I really appreciate it. And basically, this lives on my shoulder when I go for, uh, for like family events. But that didn't last forever because once I realized how good the colors were from this camera, I was waiting for Fujifilm to launch something that would meet my needs and enter the X-H2S. This camera fixed all the color problems I had with my Canon. There was nothing about this that I disliked. The autofocus is snappy, the tracking is fantastic, the colors are amazing. It has a professional body, so I can get away with using this for work, and it doesn't look like an, a toy or less than. It looks the part, it has incredible video, and frankly, the files are outstanding. I love the way the colors look from this little camera, and the lenses are incredible. This is the 33 millimeter 1.4, and I'm currently recording on the 18mm 1.8 on the A camera in front of me. And they're incredible. Like, honestly, these two lenses and these two cameras was everything that I needed for work. I also have a 56mm 1.2 uh, WR, which is the new 85-ish equivalent lens. And as a result, I have a 28mm equivalent. I have a 35mm equivalent in the X100V. I have a 50mm equivalent in the 33, and I've got an 85 equivalent in the uh, in, in the 56 millimeter 1.2. That's basically my full kit. Like everything that I own uh, and everything that I worked on since the launch of the X-H2S was with those bodies. The sensor in the X-H2S is a new design. And frankly, Fuji killed it. It's incredible. Like I don't think I've ever had a camera that produces as nice colors in as wide a range of situations as this one does. And it means that the colors from the X100V didn't really match anymore. So this went from being the gold standard for color to being slightly worse than the cameras I was using for my professional work. Now this didn't stop me from using it. I still loved this camera, but what I found was over time, I was choosing the X-H2S instead of the X100V for my personal work. It was bigger, but it had better color and I enjoyed using it more. So fast forward a little bit. Uh, I managed to pick up essentially my dream camera. Like after starting this podcast, I realized how much I'd, I'd missed doing something more creative, something that demanded more of me as a, as a photographer, something that made me work a little bit harder. And in last week's episode, we compared this to the X-H2S, so you know how similar these are, uh, these are color-wise. But I picked up the GFX 50S with the Voigtlander 58mm 1.4. And for those of you watching the video, it should be pretty apparent. This thing is huge. And for those listening in, this is maybe six times the size, seven times the size of the X100V. It's massive. It only focuses manually because I'm only using this Voigtlander 58mm 1.4 lens, which does not have autofocus. And the depth of field is the equivalent of an F1. Now, the X-H2S didn't stop me from picking up the X100V this massive medium format camera did. For the last however long I've owned this camera, this is all I've used for my personal work. It's come with me literally everywhere. It's massive, it's heavy. I don't even own a strap for it because in Fuji's infinite wisdom, they decided to use this really weird strap type that was only ever used on the Hasselblad 500 series. Seriously, Fuji? I know you fixed it now, but why? Anyway, they uh, there's no strap on it. This literally has to live in my hand. If I want to take this for personal work, I have to carry it like this. It has to be in my hand and I have to shoot with it. And frankly, I'm happier with this and the results I'm getting out of it than I was with the X100V. I want to kind of put that into context. The X100V was my favorite camera of all time. It is still in the contender of being one of the most popular cameras ever made. They are still being produced by Fujifilm, but you can't buy one because they are back ordered so far, Fuji cannot keep up with demand. These are incredible cameras, beautiful images, but all I can say is that it's a gateway drug. And if you're looking for an X100V, keep looking. Honestly, they're fantastic. They're really worth it. 
But actually, everything that Fujifilm has done since has been just as beautiful and just as good. And if you're not sure whether you, you can get away with using a different camera, especially with the new crop of Fujifilm sensors, I, I would say do it. I'd say go and buy one. You're not going to regret it. And frankly, I wanted to have a wider discussion about this kind of topic of the best camera is the one that you have with you. Well, that might be true, but I'd argue you should just bring a better camera because I have been happier with the results from my family work since picking up this GFX than I ever was with the X100V. The X100V is convenient and it's going to make you start carrying a camera again. It really is an incredible way of forcing you to carry a camera all the time. And if that's something that you need, if you want to be more prolific in the amount of work that you produce, the X100V is the correct choice. But for me, I already was making the work. The X100V had disciplined me enough to know that I should be taking photographs of my family. I should be making time for personal work. But I can tell you that every image that I've made on this camera has meant significantly more to me than the ones that I made on the X100V. Walking away with an image that's completely unique and feels totally tailored to my style and had me engaged in the moment that I took it feels like more of a fit for me than the X100V. So what's the takeaway? My gut feeling on this is that we're all going to have something like this. We're all going to have an element of our photography where we're doing the thing that everybody told you was the correct thing, that you were at the point where everybody said, oh, this is where you should go. And it might not feel right. And my encouragement to you is continue doing what you're doing, but stay curious. Because eventually you might find out that what you needed was not a small camera that you can carry with you everywhere, but a gigantic camera that would force you to engage when you're taking pictures. If you're anything like me, sometimes fresh tools can help you have a fresh perspective. But as we said in previous episodes, you can do this with the equipment that you already have. I didn't stop using the X100V until there was something to replace it with. I didn't stop taking pictures of my family. I built that discipline with the equipment that I had. And when I realized I was craving something else, I followed that craving, I followed that bliss, and I, I tried to lean into a new aspect of my photography. So for anybody listening, I'd encourage you to go out and take more pictures. And if that means picking up a smaller camera like the Fujifilm X100V, more power to you. Pick one up. They're beautiful, and you're going to love them. Throughout this video, hopefully, you'll have seen some image examples from the X100V if you've been watching the video. I'm going to put some in now from the GFX. And I really want you to take a minute to see the difference in output. These aren't taken on the same day. They're not even necessarily in the same situation. But there's something different about the quality of these two cameras. And they tell a different story. So the argument of the best camera is the one you have with you, frankly, it is only true if you wouldn't normally carry a camera. If you're choosing to carry a camera, you have a decision to make. You can decide whether to use something that gives you a old school nostalgic point and shoot aesthetic like the X100V or a more professional result with something like a Sony A1 or a Sony A7 III and a bunch of high-end prime lenses or something really different and really unique like a GFX with a manual lens on it or something crazy like a Hasselblad X-Pan or something really cool like a, like a junky film camera like a Holger. You have all these choices that you can make. So if you ever hear somebody say the best camera is the one you have with you, I'll say it again. That's true until you always have a camera on you, and then you get to make a choice about which camera is the best tool for the job. With that said, I'm on the fence. Like I'm, I'm genuinely wondering whether I should be sell, selling this X100V. Not because I don't love it, because I do. I think it's an amazing camera. I've actually said on another podcast that you'd have to pry it out of my cold, dead hands. Like I, I love it that much. It's amazing. But it isn't getting used. And because of how rare they are, and how transformative it was for me in helping me to get back into taking photographs every day, I wonder whether I should pass it on to somebody else. And I'm wondering if it, if it should find the new home. I don't have any other use for the money. I just basically want to see if somebody else will appreciate this more than I did, if they'll get more of a kick out of it than I did, or if they'll enjoy it just as much and find out that they're ready to move on to something bigger later. A lot of the guests on this podcast have also been talking about the Leica Q2 and other similar kind of small, high quality point and shoot cameras. And I encourage you to have a look at those as well. If you can't get hold of a Fuji X100V, there are some other options that you choose instead. So Let's say, I don't know, let's say you want to have something that's around about a 35 millimeter equivalent. Sony make a camera called the RX1. Uh, there were a few different models. The, there's the RX1 and the RX1R, and there was an RX1R Mark II. And those cameras are full frame. It had the same sensor as, a, I think, the A7R um, III. 
for the RX1R, and they had the same sensor as I think the A7 II or the A7 III for the, the, the low resolution camera. And they're both really affordable and they have incredible Zeiss lenses. They are older cameras, the battery life sucks, but it's another small option that could do just as good of a job as the X100V with a little bit more work. And on the high end, you have the incredible Leica Q and the Leica Q2. If you haven't tried one, if you don't want to buy one, don't try it. Because honestly, they are incredible cameras. The files look amazing. If you want something that feels and looks like a professional camera but fits in a compact body, it's the one. Um, there are people arguing that you should or shouldn't get it. Try one. I think you'll realize why people love it, even if it isn't for you. But all that said, why is the X100V so popular? I guess for a lot of people, it captures what they love about film. Uh, it captures this kind of idea that you can be a photographer and you can take a camera with you every day. It's a, a very appealing prospect and it is the highest quality camera I've ever come across that is in as beautiful a form factor as this. You're never going to find a camera at this size that is more convenient or produces a more pleasing image than this as of 2023. That's the reason you can't get them. They are incredibly popular and for a very specific group of people this is the perfect camera and it was very close to being the perfect camera for me. If this camera was full frame or had a 1.4 lens on it or both we wouldn't be having this conversation. I would never ever get rid of this. It's, it would be perfect. But actually what I've discovered is perfect for me right now is a really old lens, a totally impractical camera that produces files unlike anything else. With that said, guys, it's another shortened episode this week, so hopefully I'll see you again on Photographer's Coffee Morning next week. If you have any questions about the Fujifilm X100V or the GFX or any other camera for that matter, feel free to drop me a DM on uh, on Instagram. I'm more than happy to answer questions there. You can leave them in the YouTube comments as well. I do reply to every comment, as you might have seen from the previous video. Just want to say thank you to everyone for listening to this podcast. If you are listening on iTunes, if you could drop us a rating, that'd be massively appreciated. The more five-star reviews that we get, the more people get to hear this, and that's how we're going to grow, I guess. With all that said, thanks again for listening, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.